This fluid mechanics video is about the energy equation. I'm going to start off by relating the energy equation to the Bernoulli equation and manometer equation that you learned earlier in the course, and then preview the head loss equations that you'll get into when you get to conduit flow later in this course. And then I'm going to show you how to solve a short to intermediate level difficulty energy equation problem that also involves calculating power in a pump. It looks like Indiana is ready to start the video, so let's go. I'm Dr. Bernard, engineering professor. If you've taken a thermodynamics class already, you probably remember temperature playing a pretty big part of the conservation of energy equation, because when you were looking at closed systems, you needed to know that as a part of internal energy, the lowercase u term. And then when you got to control volumes, it was a big part of enthalpy. In fluid mechanics, we're largely going to be ignoring changes in temperature, either because we're going to assume the temperature is going to be constant in the problem, or the change in temperature will be lumped into a general head loss term. And so for this course, conservation of energy is largely the exchange of energy between pressure, velocity, and elevation. It's those three terms in the Bernoulli equation that are the main drivers of energy in this course. And so the first time you encountered a conservation of energy concept was probably day one when you looked at manometers. And the manometer equation was just a trade-off between elevation and pressure. And you can see from the black equation on the screen right now that the manometer equation can be easily rearranged into the blue version that looks just like a portion of the Bernoulli and energy equations. And so the Bernoulli equation is directly related to the manometer equation by adding velocity. If you take the manometer equation, add a velocity energy term, V squared over 2G, you get Bernoulli's equation. In a manometer, none of the liquid was moving. It was a part of fluid statics. So around week two or three of fluid mechanics, you get into fluid dynamics, and now you have a trade-off between three sources of energy, velocity, pressure, and elevation. And so this was the second time in this course that you were exposed to the conservation of energy, the Bernoulli equation. Now this video comes into play as the energy equation. This is the third time you've seen conservation of energy in this course, and now we're about halfway through the course. And the main difference between the Bernoulli equation and the energy equation is that the energy equation finally accounts for adding energy to a system or removing energy from the system. And the primary ways to add energy to the system is a pump, and its opposite, a way to remove energy from the system, is a turbine. And those two terms are represented by HP and HT. HP on the left side of equation, since it's adding energy to the system, and then HT on the right side of the equation since it's removing energy from the system. And then one last term added in HL for head loss that accounts for everything else in the piping system. This is going to be friction, it's going to be expansions or contractions, energy lost going around a corner, that sort of thing. That HL term, head loss, at this point in the course, that term will always be given to you or will be your final answer. But to preview what's coming up in fluid mechanics is later on in this course when you get to conduit flow, that is flow through pipes, that whole chapter, that whole section of the course is going to be related to solving for head loss so that you can plug that value back into this energy equation in order to solve for other terms. So when you get introduced to the Moody diagram and Reynolds number or minor losses, at that point, you'll be using characteristics like the smoothness of the pipe in order to figure out exactly what this HL term, this head loss term should be. And you'll be able to use it to solve for things like elevations and velocities and flow rates. So summing up, you're going to be exposed to conservation of energy four different times in this fluid mechanics class. The first time was manometers, where you looked at static flow that just exchanged pressure for elevation. The second time was the Bernoulli equation where you added velocity. Now that flow is moving along a streamline and you could exchange energy between pressure, elevation, and velocity. The third time is the energy equation where you finally allow energy to be added to a system by a pump or removed from the system by a turbine or generic head loss. And then the fourth time you're going to do conservation of energy is when you'll explicitly solve for head loss based on the smoothness of the pipe and the other pipe characteristics. And that will tie back into the energy equation in order to solve for other terms. 
And so my last brief discussion before moving into the example problem are gonna be alpha and Z. And so Z is the easy one, Z is just height. When dealing with manometers and the Bernoulli equation where we only had height, pressure, and velocity, it made sense to use H for height because that's what you've seen in other classes. But now in the energy equation, we introduce this H term for head loss. It's amount of energy added or removed from the system. Also using H for height would be very confusing and could lead to a lot of mistakes. So that's why Z has been substituted in for H in my equation here. And then alpha is gonna stand for the kinetic energy correction factor. When fluid flows through a pipe, if there's a uniform fluid flow, that is all fluid is moving at exactly the same speed, then this value for alpha would be one. And the average velocity accurately represents the entire fluid flow. And this is a good approximation for turbulent flow, which has a very flat nose to it. And so a value of alpha for turbulent flow is usually around 1.05 or 1.1, which we usually approximate to one just to make problems a little bit easier. But laminar flow through a pipe has a more parabolic shape, which means that the average velocity does not accurately describe the flow. And in this case, since velocity is squared for kinetic energy, that faster center flow actually has a very disproportionate effect on it. And so the correction factor for laminar flow is a value of alpha equals two in order to properly weight the extra kinetic energy involved in that much faster center flow. It is possible to solve for the value alpha if you're given a visual or graphical representation of the flow inside your pipe. But for most problems, the value for alpha will either be given to you or you'll be told that the flow is turbulent or laminar which will tell you what value to assume, either two or one, or if you wanna be very specific, a 1.05 for turbulent flow. So taking a look at this problem, let's first figure out how we would know that this could be solved with an energy equation. And the first way to recognize that is probably by looking at the final answer rest to find, which is pump power. So the equation for pump power is gonna be specific weight of the fluid times the flow rate times pump head. And we were given flow rate in this problem and we can assume a value for the specific weight. And so that just leaves finding the pump head added by the pump to the system. And if we can find that, then we can get power. And the equation that we have that includes pump head in it is the energy equation. So first step when using the energy equation is to add some points to your drawing. You need to label point one and point two, the, the two points that you are comparing to each other. And whenever you have a tank, it's almost always best to choose one of your points at the top of the tank since you'll assume that the speed of the tank lowering is gonna be very slow, so you can call that a velocity equals zero, and it's also gonna be at atmospheric pressure, which will normally cancel out. Since we have an exit of the pump at the other end, I'm gonna choose that point as my point two. So that term will have velocity, but it's also at atmospheric pressure, so that allows us to cancel out an extra term. So next I'm gonna start with the full version of the energy equation. Even though I know some of the terms are gonna cancel out, I'll write down all of the terms to make sure I don't forget anything, then I'm gonna go through and cross them off one by one. So P1 and P2 are gonna cancel since they're both atmospheric pressure. I'm gonna cross off V1 because velocity is approximately zero at the top of the tank, assuming that it's much wider than the pipe, it'll be dropping very slowly. So when looking at elevations, I could cause point two at an elevation of 20 meters and point one at an elevation of 40 meters. But instead I'm gonna change that and actually call point two at an elevation of zero and then point one at an elevation of 20 and this bottom of the tank at an elevation of negative 10. So changing my datum so that point two is at zero allows me to cross off another term. There's no turbine in this problem so I can cross off that term as well. So rewriting the simplified version of the equation after crossing off all of the terms, it looks like velocity is the last term that we're gonna need. If we can find velocity, we can plug that in and get pump head. Working over on the right side of my page now, flow rate is just equal to area times velocity. And we were given that the flow rate is eight meters cubed and we have a diameter for the pipe of one meter. So pi over four times the diameter squared. And plugging in the numbers, we get a velocity of 10.2 meters per second. Now I'm gonna be able to just work my way back to the left side of this page, plugging in this value in the energy equation to find pump head, and then plugging pump head back into the pump power equation to get pump power. So remembering to use 9.81 for gravity in the metric system instead of 32.2, and plugging in the 10.2 meters per second for velocity, I can plug into my calculator and get pump head of 22.4 meters. And so in order to find power, I first had to assume a density for water of 1,000 kilograms per meters cubed, since that value wasn't specifically given in the problem, and then multiply by the flow rate, and then the 22.4 meters of pump head that was just solved for, and we get about 1.7 million watts, and so since I said at the beginning of the problem that I wanted to express this answer in kilowatts, then I could box right there my final answer of 1758 
kilowatts. One more complicating step that could be added to this problem that wasn't included this time is pump efficiency. And for an example, if we were told that this pump uses electrical power at a rate of 75% efficiency, then in order to figure out exactly how much electricity this pump draws from the wall, we would need to divide by 0.75 because the wall would need to supply more power to the pump since only 75% of the actual electrical power coming from the wall gets delivered to the fluid system. So for efficiency, sometimes you end up multiplying by efficiency, sometimes you end up dividing by efficiency. You just need to be very careful with the wording of exactly how it's phrased and exactly which number you're given. If this video has helped you understand how to use the energy equation and how the energy equation relates to other things you're learning in your fluid mechanics course, please like this video and consider subscribing to my channel so that you can see each new video as they come out. If you really want to watch another Fluid Mechanics video right now, you should see some links on your screen, so pick your favorite one. Thanks for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.